Hi, this is Joe at Joe's Test Studio. I uh, learned uh, my, my painting craft, painting uh, local nature scenes. Uh, I would um, uh, go out on location and just uh, get a, like a basically what I'll be doing for you right now, um, just take some color and just start. I really like um, the aspens. You call them birch in the, in the east. We call them aspen trees out in the west. And I like to start off with just some real interesting, wonderful color. And then what we can do is we can just start, let the, let the paint mix on the page. It's much more exciting if you just throw the paint on and just let it mix. Uh, you can spend five minutes mixing a color in your palette, and by the time you get it on the page, it probably will not work. So uh, just have some faith in this business, and then you just come in and just start putting in some different colors and let them just mix and just have fun. This is what this business is all about, is to watch the paint mix on the page. And don't try to control it. If you try to control this, you're going you're gonna to run into all sorts of problems with this. Um, I do not um, uh, worry about certain areas in here. They will take care of themselves. And what I will do with the aspen trees and the birches, I will wait just a few minutes and then I will scrape the tree trunks in. First I have to get the darks in here, or first I have to get the color in here, and then let it mix, let the paper dry a little bit. When the, when the shine goes off of the paper, when it gets wet, when you put water and paint on the page, <coughs> the uh, paint and the water will sit on the surface until the paper opens up and it starts accepting the color. And when the shine goes off of the surface of the paper is when I will scrape that. But what I can do now to kind of save, to kind of <coughs> save some time and stuff is I can start blocking in some, some dark trees shapes. Um, <coughs> paint a group of trees as one unit. And then you can go back and you can um, fine tune and showcase a certain area or a certain tree. Here I am, I'm throwing, I started with a green and I went to a purple. Now I'm going to throw a red over here. And let's just see what happens here with it. I'm going to pull one of them down in front of the composition to kind of give it a little more depth here. Just work the brush any which way. St I like to stand up when I paint. Then I get the action from my shoulder instead of if I was sitting down, it would be the action would come from <clears throat> from my elbow. I like to have complete freedom here. Okay, I'll come over here and get some different color mixtures, this, this, and this. Um, I like to try all sorts of different mixtures and see if someone tells me I can't use a color with this color, I often ask myself why. Uh, you're in charge of this business, so you should be able to use any color you prefer. Um, and who knows what's going to happen when you start mixing these colors together. So I would suggest to just have fun <clears throat> and try different, different um, mixtures, different ideas. That's where the exciting paintings come, is when people take a chance. Okay, I'll just throw in a few darks here and get ready to go here with my scraping. Once I get the scraping done, then I can come in <clears throat> and put a little bit of water down. It'll be like a little snow scene here. I think that's about ready to go. We can try it. If not, we can always wait a little bit. I can come down here and put this in. But let's try this. Um, my scraping tool is a butter knife. And uh, it's, I've used it quite a bit. Uh, you can get a very, very thin scrape by how you hold it on the point, or if you lay it on its edge, you can get a very, very uh, wide scrape. Uh, for this size here, I think it'll be just fine if we just go here like this. See how easy that is? It just really, what I'm doing is I'm scraping the paint away from this of the paper. Now here I'll do, I'll throw a few upright limbs here, like that. I don't like to take too much time to paint. I think the faster you paint these things, the better off they are. 
and try not to think too much. That has ruined more paintings, the procrastination. Just jump right in and be bold, be fast, and then enjoy the process, enjoy what happens. Um, it's a wonderful way to spend your time watching paint dry. It's, uh, I'll put some uprights here for these trees here. And I don't think, I, maybe I can throw one here like this. And then I can just throw a little branches like this. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I think that's about all I'll do for that. Now I'll come back in here and I'll, whatever I have in my palette, I'll just pick up and just lay in very quickly for the water. I like to get some different colors in here. Let's see what we can get. Oh yeah. If you like a color, well by all means use it. You're in charge. This brush will not do anything until you tell it to. Okay. Now that I have this, and then for the for the where the water meets the the bank and the snow here, then we will just take and soften that edge up. Hold the brush upright and pull it directly across. Okay. Now, once that once I get this in here. I see here I need a little more water there, so I need to just come in and touch that back. We're going to do some reflections of what's up here in here. Now see what's happened. I'm getting a really a kind of a, a loose edge here, a fuzzy edge here because the paint is forming. Look at this edge right here and look how that tree disappears in. To me that's watercolor. Um, I would like to see more people paint this way. It's uh, um, it's a very exciting way. Okay, now we have some yellows, we have some pinks, and we have some greens and blues. Let's just grab some here, a little bit of yellow here and here, and just pull that and just pull it straight down. Now let's let the paint mix on the page, okay? Look what's going to happen here and here. I'll come over here and get a little red, a little of this, and see if I can... Oh, that's okay. Now what we'll do is we'll come here with a little darks. And be sure and really paint your darks very, uh, use more dark than you really think you need. And I'll come and touch it into there. See down here, I'll just throw a little green in this. Let's have a color journey here, folks. Let's have, uh, let's have an exciting painting when we get done. And I'll just throw that and let it mix in, okay? Now. What we can do next is come in here and pick this up in here. We need to soften this again here. We want it to look, we want it to look very, very wintry, very cold. And I see that brush is not doing it, so I'll go to the big fellow here. This big, um, it's an inch and a half. And I know it'll do this. Okay, here we go. We'll pick it up again. That should do it. Okay, I think that'll be fine. Uh, what I can do next is I can come up here and I can get a dark and kind of tie these areas together. Usually on the bottom of the, of the aspen trees, on the, the bottom where it meets the surface, they usually have a dark area here. You don't have to do each one of them. Just give an indication here. Okay, if you wanted to, you could also take your butter knife and you can scrape a few images in here if you would like. Um, you could come down like this, and just scrape them in like that. You don't want to do too much. Now, once again, I'll come up here and I will come across and pick up some of the dark and move it across the composition See what that did right there? It just moved this dark across to make a water line. And as usual, I went back into it when I shouldn't have. So I'll come from this edge and just pull it right straight across there. Okay? Okay, there you are. That should complete this exercise.